Tackling Sammer by Courtney Kofop. About the presenter. My name is Courtney Kofop. I'm in my sixth year at Pennsylvania Leadership Charter School. It is a blended environment where the majority of our students are attending online. I for the past five years have been an English teacher and for the past two I've been a technology coordinator for our whole K to 12 um, environment. I'm also a Google certified educator, a Nearpod pioneer trainer, and most importantly for this presentation, I'm a tech advocate. The objectives for this presentation. What exactly will you learn today? I want to review SAMR and the SAMR model. I want to show you how to create a TAC. Uh, I will also go over what tools embed into a TAC. And then tackling SAMR. So what exactly is SAMR? I'm, I'm sure the majority of you already know, but to review. SAMR is a model designed to help educators infuse technology into teaching and learning. It is developed by Ruben Puentadora. The model supports and enables teachers to design, develop, and infuse digital learning experiences that utilize technology. This is when technology is redefining learning experience for students and allows teachers to modify their instruction when you're getting to the augmenting stages that's at the beginning and um, you augment the learning experience with technology and can enhance engagement and then at the very basic level teachers can substitute technology for for traditional instruction to increase achievement so looking at this model Many people want to hit that redefinition level every time, but really you want to work your way up to that redefinition level. And you want to really focus on the task and what level of SAMR is most beneficial for students to gain the knowledge. Now, TAC. I love this program. It is a web page creation tool, and one of the best parts of it is that it's device agnostic, so it will work on any platform. So if your students are using iPads, if they're using desktops, it is um, browser-based and app-based. So it's really wonderful that uh, you and your students can use this on any device. It is very easy to edit and perpetually add content. And it's linear and easy to follow. You can create a custom URL for easy access. And then um, it's very easy to share. Uh, it's not a PDF or a PowerPoint that has to be hosted externally. It's its own web page. And did you know that TAC offers the ability to embed live maps, photos, text, uh, links, and videos within their platform from a variety of sources. And that's where we're going to dive into today how many tools can easily embed into the TAC page and how you can use TAC to app smash with these programs and Web 2.0 tools that you are using and your students are using. There are two ways that apps and tools can dress up a tech by being embedded within it. Um, there's a direct embed. Some tools can embed live and are fully functional with ha without ever having to leave tech, such as Thin ThingLink. Um, but then there's also an option to um, thumbnail embed. So other tools like Shadow Puppet, Haiku Deck, and SnapGuide will be linked within the tech and appear as a small thumbnail. Uh, that will take users to an external site. So one of the things that I want my students to be doing is really that single sign-on. So TAC allows you to do that with um, many of their programs, um, like ThingLink. But then also it's just taking them to, the, to a link as well. So it, it really eliminates a lot of the hassle of 
all these multiple websites and tools that you're using, it can really be hosted on this tech page that you're creating or your students are creating. Now, we've talked about tech a little bit. How easy it, is it to create one? So we will do that actually right now. So as you can see, it is a very straightforward editor. And to sign up, all you need is an email address. It's also connected with um, Google Plus, so you can just use your Google account for easy sign-on. Um, it is linked with Casper, so if your school is using Casper, you can easily create student accounts as well. So this is a blank canvas. There are other templates, as you can see here, blank about me, Instagram, blog, school project. This is just a blank one. And you can see that I can easily put in titles. I can put in text. can easily add photos and it actually um, has a library of photos that you and your students can choose from. You can also upload. You can connect your Instagram account. So if you have a class Instagram, that's great to connect or you can paste from a URL. There is also uh, the ability to add videos. So um, it is linked with YouTube, Vimeo, Animoto, Instagram, and Vine. You can also upload your own photos, which is great. It's powered by vid.me. Um, so those wonderful, if you have your students using iMovie, they can take that file directly from their computer and have it hosted on the TAC page. audio as well. So it's connected with SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, 8-Tracks. Um, you can also like videos and photos, pull from your own computer and upload. You can create buttons. So if there are tutorials or reviews that you want to link but not directly embed, you can create that button where it will link students to it. Um, maps, which is great for reports that students are completing. You can create a virtual field trip with information um, through these maps. You can have a form. So you can pose a question and um, have students put in their name and uh, their answer or a question that they may have about the material. And one of the best things, as I was saying, it is connected to so many Web 2.0 tools already. Um, right off the bat, you can see that you can embed a tag within a tag, so it's almost like an inception thing. Um, you can connect a Twitter feed, slide share, thing link, um, and then here are some of the other programs that embed as well. So it is really very um, extensive, the amount of tools that are working in conjunction with TAC. I, um, for the, going back to the buttons, I forgot to mention, I, a lot of times, um, I love using Google Apps and Google Forms, so I'll create a Google Form and put a customized button um, 
see that form, maybe an exit ticket for my students and they can click on it and it takes them to that Google form. Um, you can also have an RSVP, so if you're setting up a school event or your students are trying to set something up, they can easily do that as well. As you see at the bottom, there's a comment stream, so that's where you can have a class discussion, they can post questions, they can um, upload photos and videos to that as well, so you can almost create a anthology um, of videos if you wanted to in a comment stream for your class. It's very easy um, to edit and really dress up your tack because there are a variety of patterns included already. You can upload your own backgrounds. You can change fonts. You can change the uh, palette of your tack. So um, whatever is to your liking, like I said, the pattern. Um, and then there are other options. So you can actually set your tack to private. So um, maybe there are a specific class information you only want your students to see. Um, one of the um, great features too is you can create tags. So um, maybe you're creating uh, student tutorials and you're having students create them and they can create tack boards with a specific tag. Um, such as unit one tutorials and if they put that in it will house those tutorials on one tack board. I do that for um, professional develop resources for my teachers so all the uh, tutorials can be found in one place so we can take a look at that as well. You can customize your your title of your tack page and like you said, upload a photo background if you wanted to. And also create a customized URL so it's very easy for your students to find. Um, you can turn off the tax stream if you want to. And then um, you can change the look, rounded corners, or um, more square look. So. Um, it is extremely easy to create these tags and they really turn out into great products. Um, once you, you publish, there's a, ver a variety of options where you can share your tags. So um, via Facebook, Twitter, um, Pinterest, uh, and then also it gives you an embed code. So if you are using something like Moodle or a different LMS, it, it um, is easily embedded into to those as well. Here are some ideas for utilizing um, TAC with your students. So, um, 20 ways to use TAC in the classroom. So you can use it for lesson planning, persuasive writing. Students can cr be creating these promotional products, um, collaborative products, because it is really easy to contribute with that comment stream, as I was saying. Um, presentations to uh, students, districts, and teachers. Parent communication, class photo memories. Um, like I was saying, it embeds directly to a blog or an LMS, so it's easy for, for you to use and also if your students want to embed it into one of your learning management systems as well. Um, peer critiques and feedback, Skype classroom collaboration, student e-portfolios. Um, I think portfolios and digital portfolios are extremely important for your students to be developing because it's something that they can cr uh, collect and curate their artifacts that they've been creating, especially if you're using those Web 2.0 tools, like I was saying, like ThingLink, and embedding those directly into the tech so it can house all, all the wonderful products that you're using. Um, you can use it as uh, a way to um, have your tutors communicate, video and audio display, promote events, um, research papers, and uh, really create um, interactive graphic organizers and um, review guides and student tutorials. Um, 
instead of just a standard essay, they can create a tack, or um, instead of the standard book report, they can create a, a um, tack page for the book that they're reviewing, uh, school announcements, and it, it really is unlimited. The um, opportunities you can have your students use tack and also just yourself because it's creating these interactive resources. Here are some example tag pages that I have made over the course of the last two years for um, teachers and my students. I create many tutorials for my teachers on how to utilize various Google programs and it's so easy to directly embed the videos and tutorials that I created and an easy way for me to um, archive those tutorials in one place. We recently switched to a new learning management system, so I've created a series of videos. On the various functions and best practices for Canvas. Ways to manage gradebook. <clears throat> and if you take a look, I have created a Canvas best practice tag. So when I click that, it takes me to the full library of all those and I can give my teachers this URL and they can look at the boards and access all the tutorials in one place. The format is consistent as well. Now looking at each level of SAMR, here's how you can utilize TAC. So at the substitution level, the very basic level, where you're just substituting the TAC for um, the activity, there's no extra layer to it. You can have students type vocabulary definitions on a TAC instead of just writing them by hand. So it's direct substitute the TAC page. Moving up to the augmentation level, students share a TAC with a vocabulary list and collaborate on the comment stream by refining the de definitions they develop. Now moving up to the modification level, students create a tack. They can collaborate and add images and videos of the vocabulary definitions to support the definitions they developed. And then at that redefinition level, students create videos where they define vocabulary words using dialogue and images from their environment. The videos are then posted to their TAC page. Their peers can provide feedback using the comment stream. All the videos can be archived on a single TAC board by using the same tag. For example, Miss K class videos or um, the vocabulary list can have a specific tag that you develop or hashtag. And that can also be a class activity where you're developing the tag name. I hope you found these instructions on how to tackle SAMR using TAC. For watching my video on tackling SAMR, you can join my PLN uh, by following me on Twitter. My username is Miss underscore Kof. And then you can follow me on TAC as well and look at my various TAC examples at um, tac.com slash at Miss Kofelt. Please let me know if you um, have any questions. You can find my information on my TAC page if you want to contact me for more resources.